just encountered uh, one of Jeffy Kilmer's videos where he described the uh, describe the way people, the way governments are, the way the world is dealing with this virus, this uh, what do you call this? <clears throat> all the chaos they've been, all the chaos right now. He calls it global bullshit. All right. <clears throat> Basically, global bullshit means well outrageous quarantine policies well the philippines is no different all right the philippines is no different well, although um we uh the whole country is in support of the uh of the national government's drive to to stave off uh to stave off the second or third waves of this disease okay of this pandemic i'm not going to say the name of the disease or the virus all right I don't want to feed the fear. Okay, you know, you guys know me. You know me, Reddit. So, global bullshit means um, brands suddenly approaching you out of the blue, offering you uh, offering you packages when we're in. You presented you presented it to them, they turned you down. Okay, because. That's that's how Jeffrey Gittimer, that's what Jeffrey Gittimer's, uh foundation for globe for the term global bullshit is. All of a sudden, out of the blue, brands are approaching him, offering them or just offering them uh, chuba chenis. Okay. Now, here's how I deal with global bullshit. Okay, I put my foot down. I state my opinion. And number three, I aim to make my new normal. I aim to make my own normal, to be exact. Okay? I do not give a shit what the definition of the new, what any government's definition of a new normal is. You shouldn't do. You should not do. Although, okay, let's accept the fact that changes will happen once this is all over it well it has it has begun to tell you frankly but for your own you should make your own normal you should put your foot down and you should state your own opinion be opinionated for god fucking sake be opinionated for once in your life because in these trying times, these confusing times, and in these, well, with all the global bullshit, you need to be opinionated. Okay? Putting your foot down is the first step, actually. So, if a brand, uh, if you think a brand is bullshit, tell them. Tell them, not interested. That's stating your opinion. Step two. And of course, step three, make your own normal. All right? Be a better version of yourself. Not the version, not the version your government tells you to, tells that you should, that should, you should be, that you should be. Okay? You are your own, in the end, at the end of the day, <clears throat> at the end of this, at the end of this crisis, you are your own person. So, by the time this is all over, you should be a better version of it. That's your own normal. And stick to it. Okay? Stick to it. So, that's how, uh, that's how I basically deal with global bullshit. I repeat, I put my foot down. I opinionate. And I plan to make my own normal. If you think those three steps will help you, go ahead. Use it. But let me tell you, I want those three steps to work for me first. Okay? So, results may vary. This is my opinion, and I don't give a fuck what other, uh, what other people say. What other people will say. Do you think evil knows no bounds? That's true. 
shows incompetence. Alright. We had an we had a run in this morning with the dinatawag na poso, the uh, San Pedro's local uh, San Pedro's local traffic enforcement, okay, enforcement. Okay. <clears throat> Sinubukan nila is uh, itong isang taga isang taga poso. Sinubukan nilang uh, sinubukan yung ano uh, i-confiscate, okay, yung quarantine pass, yung quarantine pass namin. Well. I was able to snatch it from him. Okay? So, kasi sinabi ko, araw namin, ba't nasa iyo ang quarantine pass namin? Okay? Kung hindi ko hiningin, hindi ko, hindi niya ibibigay eh. But what pissed me off, what fucking pissed me off this morning was, gusto niyang i-confiscate din ng senior at PWD IDs ng mother at sister ko, respectively. Okay? Dun sa, dun sa poso officer na yon, go fuck yourself! Okay. You are incompetent as fuck. You're incompetent as fuck. Wala akong pakialam kung poso ka. Palamunin ka lang ng taong bayan. Ang mga amilyar namin nagiging sweldo mo. So don't be fucking arrogant with me. Now, in light of that, this is my entry. You know what? Incompetence can be remedied, but if you make it a habit, as I was saying, if it becomes a habit, it's absolutely fucking annoying. Right? Now, thought leaders like Dan Pena was, uh, is always right when, when they say, if you're a high performer, no one can outwork you. Okay? No one can doubt your, well, your, uh, that you're up to the job. Now, if you say that uh, you're a high performer and, well, you're not even familiar with the laws uh, with the laws pertaining to it, like that, uh, katulad ng ginawa ng tagaposo kanina, you're stupid. Right? You're stupid. So remember, incompetence knows no bounds. This morning, I uh, unfollowed some, uh, what you call this, some um, uh, accounts of never marketing gurus that still insist, that well, that still advocate um, promoting promoting on Facebook. Well, it's sort of irrelevant to me these days because well. <clears throat> Some of you may know that I don't have a Facebook account anymore because Facebook management, Facebook themselves di uh, disabled my account. So if they do settle the issue, I plan not to be active there anymore. Although I, well, it's a, uh, it would be a waste. It would be a waste to just uh, di have the have my account deleted. Because well, I still have um, I still got family and friends there who are still uh, or still reliant on Facebook for their communication needs. Okay, but if ever if the the issue is settled, I don't plan to promote my brand, my business on Facebook anymore. All right. Well, so that's why I've unfollowed some. I've un I've unfollowed the um, the network marketing guru uh, the the network marketing gurus that still um, that still tell their followers their subscribers to well, to uh, no, to promote their brands on Facebook first. <laughs> it's not relevant to me anymore. All right. Walana ng FB, so bago ko pa sila pakinggan. Right? It's pointless. It's pointless. Okay? It's pointless. I got Instagram. I got LinkedIn. Okay? Compared to FB, well, LinkedIn is way better. If you want to, uh, if you want to communicate with uh, professionals like yourself, do it on LinkedIn, not Facebook. Okay? 
dalawang bagay lang ang mapapala mo sa FB. Fake news and probably, well, fake friends. Okay? You may have 5,000 friends on Facebook, but I guarantee you, not all of them, not all of them are your real life friends. Not all of them are are your friends in real life. You haven't seen them in person. You haven't shaken hands with them. You haven't um, you haven't even argued with them belly to belly. Huh? <clears throat> and well. If you're a professional network marketer, you would rather network on LinkedIn. Kasi kapa mo professional eh. Although hindi network marketer pa ha. Okay. So, right there and then, you have to you have to provide your worth. Okay, provide your value. On Facebook, you can't do that. There are a lot of distractions. And I am glad my account has been disabled. But at the issue ever become settled well you won't see you won't see me promote my brand anymore i won't even if well if my page if my page is still up there i might delete it already and uh i might well i will uh leave uh uh, groups related to my business or my brand so it'll just be a it'll just be a personal account i don't i don't I have no more plans in promoting my brand, my business, or both on Facebook. Yes, well, and well, so I'll so I'll have to unfollow more, uh, more, what you call this, more gurus that still insist that you should use Facebook. Okay, so I'm still not done yet. <laughs> I still have to. I still have to um, check them all out if they still promote Facebook. I came across a new term, uh, a new network marketing term actually. It was coined by um, John Melton. John and Nadja Melton, all right, the, famous, uh, the famous network marketing married couple. Okay. He calls um, what I call uh, spamming and salesiness, he calls it commission breath. Okay, now, well, okay, yeah. <laughs> it's about time I use it too. But, um, for those who are, um, for those who have absolutely no idea what uh, commission breath is all about, it's ba- that's basically it, that's the essence spamming and salesiness. Okay. If you are always pitching your product, your opportunity, or both online and offline through any means necessary uh, at almost 24 hours a day, every minute of the day actually, okay, to unknowing and unwilling prospects, you're a spammer. You're salesy. You have commission breath. Mukhang pera ka. <clears throat> in these trying times, okay, in these most trying times, <clears throat> we don't need commission breath. Okay? We need our, we need to clean our mouths. Okay? We need to sanitize them. We need to, to be authentic. We need to, uh, what you call this, to be uh, truthful to everyone. We need to, we need to gain trust muna. How can you gain trust if you have, if you got commission breath? Seriously? Or if you, well, if you do, um, if someone buys a product from you, well, that person also has commission breath. Eh, di magsama kayo. You, like, like what I said, like what I, oh, like what I said in my blog, you attract the kind of network marketer that you are. Okay? So, always check your mouth for commission breath. Okay? Now, here's an exclusive. I am going to expound on 
this post in my blog. So you better follow my blog now. It's coming out next month. Another morning with a keto breakfast. Ay, salamat. Kaninang, uh, siguro, few, several minutes ago, um, our, our glorious, okay, barangay officials gave out rice again. Alright? <laughs> gave out rice again, okay, for the end time. Rice. Okay? No, no other essentials. No canned goods. No, um, um, what you call this? Uh, kahit face mask. Okay? Kahit, uh, disposable face mask. Wala eh. Rice pa rin. <clears throat> The city government of San Pedro is, is still, um, giving out rice. Okay? Without, Uh, without taking heed of an of, in, of an impending okay of an impending uh, epidemic of an impending epidemic within this city diabetes okay rice is the staple Filipino food okay Filipino ako kaya alam ko yan but should you eat should in this time of crisis you should you eat to Should you eat too much rice? Okay? Too much carbohydrates can lead to diabetes. Alright? If you do not want to start another epidemic, cut it out with the rice. Okay? This is a message to the San Pedro City Government. Wag na kayong magbigay ng rice. Canned goods naman. Or, or kahit disposable face mask man lang. All right, there are other essentials besides rice, and you are not addressing it. Again, if you don't want to start another, a new epidemic within this city, cut it out on the rice. I'm uh, go. My mind is going through memory lane right now, and uh, it. Uh, it's pushing me back. It's pulling me back to the time when I first commuted by myself. Okay. <clears throat> Here was the story. Okay. No first year high school ako, nagsa service ako. Okay. I will, we had we had a, we had a shuttle service of sorts. <clears throat> Napos. Um, Sabi ng <clears throat> Sabi ng ka-service ko pero hindi ko naman kasabay na uh, nagkaroon ng family, nagkaroon yata ng emergency ang driver. So he had to he had to leave us right away to attend to it. So kumaga hinatid na muna yung mga uh, hinatid na muna sa school yung yung mga panghap yung mga nakaschedule that time so naiwan ako sa school <clears throat> because we weren't done with a we weren't done with the lesson we weren't done with the lesson back then so naiwan ako and I don't know what to do so binigyan ako ng advice ng mga schoolmates ko na hindi nag uh, na hindi na na hindi nag service pero nag commute okay so I took their I took their instructions. Ito mang yak yak na ako na iyakin iyakin ako nung araw eh, nung first year hanggang first year high school ako. So medyo mang, mang yak yak na ako noon, nag-tricycle muna ako. At that that was 19 that was 1985. Okay, that was 1985. <clears throat> Hindi pa allowed ang jeep noon sa highway at that time. Okay? So our only means of transportation back then was tricycle. So maraming tricycle noon, nagtricycle ako hanggang bayan ng Binyang. So after that, nag ano ako, doon ako nag jeep hanggang Pasita. Okay? Doon ako nag jeep hanggang Pasita. 
and was raining it was raining hard at the time okay malakas ang ulan noon wala akong dalang payong wala rin ako dalang wala wala rin ako dalang kapote noon ni uh, ni sombrero wala okay all i had was a jacket all i had was a jacket so tinayo naman ako ng jeepney driver na ayun nga mag tricycle ako mula labasan hanggang sa amin sabihin ko lang sinabi ko kung saan ako nakatire so binigyan ako ng advice ng jeepney driver and ayun nga I was able to to hail a tricycle ang special nun was on, ano lang um, I think 5 pesos at the time special na <clears throat> ngayon magkano 30 on 30 dito sa San Pedro harang nga eh but anyway going back to my story was able to hail a tricycle like special na ako so nakarating ako dito nakarating ako dito sa house namin that was my very first time to commute by myself okay that was, that was the very first time I commuted by myself that was um, that was the first time I became street smart okay that was uh, yeah that was the first time I be, I be that was that was the that was the day I became street smart actually that was not the first time that was the day I became street smart do ko na realize na not all intelligence comes from school okay not all intelligence comes from school it's the um, it's the most dire of circumstances that make you street smart for the street smart for the first time and that um, and that going home problem was it for me right so did you what was when was the day you became street smart comment below a lot of um, <coughs> excuse me a lot of thought leaders on YouTube uh, have said that homeschooling, okay, homeschooling after all, all uh, after all of this ends, homeschooling will become the trend. I don't think so. Okay. Personally, I don't think so. <clears throat> well, call me old school, but homeschooling is fine. Okay especially if you're coming off a pandemic especially if you're coming off a um, a crisis just like this okay it's fine you're uh, you as a parent okay I i'm no parent okay but you as a parent would be scared to send your send your kids to school again because uh, well there's this fear <clears throat> there's this um there's this press this clear and present fear Hello, clear and present danger, no. <clears throat> clear and present fear of uh, of that virus um, rearing its ugly head again. <clears throat> so, as a parent, you might not send your kids to school again and opt for homeschooling. But if you're the student, well, I don't know about the elementary and high school ones, but if you're a college student, uh, you would rather go out. Okay? You would rather go out because, well, homeschooling might not be, well, this is my, this is my, uh, this is my take on what level will be allowed to homeschool. If you're a college student, homeschooling might not be available to you, okay? You will be expected to get your ass in the classroom, right? To get your ass in school and study. Now, Here's what college students would um, should think after after the crisis so after the crisis is over and they can go back to they can go back to school again. <clears throat> Do not uh, go to school just because for the grades. Go back to school for the connections. Okay, because well. Again, I mean, uh, I may be old school, but for for me, as I um, as a forty seven year old former college student, the connections are more valuable to me now. 
back then, no, it's not that valuable. All I cared about was, uh, all I cared about was how to pass a subject. But today's generation of students should be, should be different in terms of mindset when it comes to going back to school. You should go after the connections. Okay? Not not the uh, connections on how to na kunting pakiusap lang ipapasa na. No. Don't do that. Okay? That's an, that's that that's under the, that's still under the table in today's standards. Okay? Wag wag na wag yung gagawin niyan. <clears throat> the connections, I mean the friendships, the um, the good teacher student relationships. Okay. Mind you, if you are in good terms with all of your instructors, your professors, they may serve you later on. Okay? They may serve you later on. For example, I've um here's, here's a good example. <clears throat> My former um therapeutic exercise instructor and uh and coordin and uh, intern coordinator. God bless his soul. He's, he already he passed away two years ago. Okay, he already passed away two years ago. God bless his soul. Um, he was he was also one of my very first um, clients for Phil and Life. Okay, he was. He, I sold him a mutual fund product that did well after one year. And we we met again at uh, at at a, at a mall, also in Binyang. And he said, he said, Jason, say Jason na tawag sa akin eh. Okay, I wasn't known as JJ Ramos at the time, just Jason. Jason, kumita yung ano ah? Kumita ako ng malaki dun sa mutual fund na binenta mo sa akin. Oh, sabi ko, oh, ganon masaya. Ma, congrats. Pagkano ba? Ne, jo. Sabi ko, Gino ko pa yun. Magkano? Hindi ko na yun. Gino ko lang yun. And he suddenly, he suddenly told me that he wants to invest again. Okay? He wants to invest, he wants to reinvest in the mutual, in that mutual fund and he wants to get another one. Another kind of mutual fund from me. So, sabi ko, sige. Um, sabi ko, next week, uh, punta ko, punta ko kayo sa, ano, punta ko kayo sa school, doon tayo mag-usap. So, that's how, that's, uh, that's what we did. I presented to him uh, on a, uh, the, a much better, I mean, yung more, ano, yung medyo, let's call this, medyo moderate yung risk. Kasi yung binenta ko sa kanya noon, low risk. Kumaga, <clears throat> he wanted more security than, um, than, than profit at the time. Eh, nakita niya yung performance ng kanyang investment. Uy, <laughs> Maganda to. So he was he was motivated to get another one from me. So I So I presented him the um, the the moderate risk one. He instantly get he instantly signed he instantly signed the application form. He got it. He, he's already invested. Um, so that that's so it was probably uh, well, I was in good terms with him. Okay, I was in good terms with that uh, with that professor of mine. Okay, I was in good terms with him. So I, I was a good student. Okay, well, in all my times at in uh, in my school career, I was a really good student. Okay, hindi ko hindi ako chuchu, hindi ako chuchu, hindi rin ako um, na mamakawas sa professor na ipasa na ipasa ako. Magbagsak, bagsak talaga. Because that's what my that's what my um, that's what my father told me. Kung bagsak ka talaga, bagsak ka talaga, ulitin mo. <laughs> That's what I did with one subject. That's what I did with one subject. <clears throat> but anyway, so the connections I have built during college served me. Served me pretty well during my sales career. Okay. And now, um, um, later on, so, um, there's another one. There's another example I'd like to give you guys. <clears throat> my former rheumatology professor is now my eye doctor. And you're probably asking, how did it happen? Okay. He is actually a... Uh, his, his first specialization was 
rehab, rehabilitation medicine was rehab med. So that's why he was able to teach us the art of rheumatology. Okay. He has some special academic units for that. So he was, uh, he was credible enough to become our professor. And later on, I found out that he changed specializations to ophthalmology. Okay. We had an eye doctor. We had an eye doctor at the time. Uh, then, when my father passed away, kami naman ang mother ko ang naging pasyente ng doktor na yun. Now, uh, due to some uh, unclear reason, that eye doctor of ours um, is no longer showing up at the hospital where he is, uh, where he is holding a clinic. So, sabi ko sa mother ko, pati na lang kay ano, sa dati kong, sa dati kong prof magpatingin ko. Total ophthalmologist din siya eh. So, I was able to, we were able to schedule an appointment with him. Uh, Siyempre, kilalang kilala niya ako. Kilalang, ah, I told you guys, I was a good student in college, okay? I was a good student. <clears throat> so, yun na. Uh, he was able to check my eye, to check my eyes. At uh, binis dun sa data na nakuha niya dun sa case file ko. And, he suggested that, um, uh, that I should get a, I should take a perimetry test, which I haven't, uh, which I haven't undergone up to now. Because, kung hindi nagkaroon ng ganitong crisis, I, I might have, I might have taken that test already. <laughs> Pero, wala eh. Tenga lahat. Tenga lahat. So, he suggested a, so, he was, uh, uh, his diagnosis, his, his diagnosis of my eyes is, uh, is, is, uh, is better. So that's another example. Okay. To all so to all you college students who are about to enter school once this crisis is over, here's my tip for you. Do not go to school just for the grades. Okay? I'm going to include not just the college students but the high school and elementary students. Okay? I promise you, this will serve you well when you grow older. When you have careers, when you have when you have uh, when you have reputations, when you build a reputation for yourself, the connections you build during your school your school years will serve you. Will serve you later on. Take it from me. Okay? It has served me twice already in my lifetime.